Hi guys, thanks for tuning in. So after using the Pocket 6K for one year, I finally sold it for the Zcam E2F6. Why did I sell it and what is particularly interesting about the Zcam E2F6? You're gonna find out in this upcoming review right now. Hi guys, my name is Paul, I'm a German filmmaker and this channel is all about filmmaking gear reviews but also DaVinci Resolve tutorials. So if that's something that you're interested in, consider subscribe, I would really appreciate that. So there's already um, amazing content on there about Red Komodo, Blackmagic Pocket 6K, Zcam versus Blackmagic and so on. So I think you will find very interesting stuff there. So I bought the Zcam E2F6 and I sold my Blackmagic Pocket 6K even though I was really pleased about the image of the 6K. Um, if you are from the German area, I can recommend buying it fr from Blickpulse. Um, there are not many sellers here in Germany, so um, yeah, therefore I can recommend their service it was really quick and fast and also customer service is really great. We'll link it for you down below. So let's start off with the build quality and overall design. So the Zcam E2F6 has a cube form factor, which is really nice. Um, it's built out of metal. It's built like a tank, really. Um, surprisingly, there's no fan inside, which is really awesome, I think. Um, and also, because of the form factor, you can have a really lightweight rig, which I really like. Um, you also have customizable, a few customizable buttons, which is really helpful, and I already used it. Also, the Zcam has a locking EF mount, so uh, you don't have to worry that um, your uh, lens is like. Um, not secure on there, so it's really sturdy and that uh, basically is for the entire camera It's really uh, the build quality is really exceptional. So now let's talk about the menu Overall, I like the menu. It's simple and it's easy to navigate But also at the same time it's sometimes confusing because I don't understand why they put um, recording and video not in one uh, menu point. So for example, if you want to change the frame rate, you have to go to one menu point and if you want to change the um, yeah, Recording options so like ProRes or HS65 or RAW, you have to switch to another um, Point in the menu so that could be easily fixed But overall, I think the menu is very simple and even on the small screen right here You can see it and you can uh, basically adjust everything on there. One thing that I also really like is that I can control the camera via the app. Um, so like on the Red Komodo, I have a preview on the camera so I can see what I'm shooting. I can adjust anything in the app. So, and that also allows me to mount the camera, something like an overhead rig and then just um, keep shooting with the phone so that is really great and that uh, is really helpful for me for um, yeah, mounting it on different locations where you can't physically always be there to start shooting so and also the functions that you have on the app are really great and also the latency is really minimal so I think Zcam did a great job on that here. So now let's talk about battery life and battery life is really exceptional. The Zcam uses um, the popular NPF batteries. These ones are really cheap. You can either go with these small batteries or you can also use some bigger ones. I personally always use some bigger ones which also have an LED um, status bar on the, on the back because the camera doesn't show you any percentage but it's it shows you voltage so whenever you are around 6.5 to 6.0 um, you should change the battery because then it's already empty but also the camera shows you that so that's quite helpful but back to topic um, the camera runs forever on these bigger batteries that i have so uh, i can shoot almost the whole day with it and uh, that is really great so the power consumption on the Zcam E2F6 is really exceptional and as I've said the batteries are easy to find they are cheap 
and um, yeah the camera lasts forever and i also read in the internet that they are poor when it comes to um, cold outside temperatures so i was shooting uh, in the snow in the mountains for the entire day and i didn't have any issue and the, the camera was running really great and also the batteries weren't really draining faster than, than before. So I think um, this is a really great choice here. So now let's come to recording and codecs. So since the new firmware update, the Zcam E2F6 can record ProRes 422 HQ in all formats and all frame rates, recording modes whatsoever. So that is really great. Additionally, you can also shoot in H.265. It's more compressed and it's 420. So if you don't need that much space or if you're just shooting a really small gig, then H.265 is great because it also it's easy to edit. You also get H.264, but that's only 8-bit. And you also get zero. And you, when you're using an Anthomas recorder, you can also use ProRes RAW. So you have really plenty of options on the Zcam, which I personally find is really great. So now let's come to the most important thing, and that is the image quality. So that was really my concern. Um, how does the image look like? And I really like the image. Also, the dynamic range that you get in Z-Log2 is really amazing. So the camera claims to have 15 stops of dynamic range. I don't have a, a possibility to make a scientific test, but from what I've seen, the dynamic range on the camera is really, really great. Also, the colors on the Zcam are always really pleasing and always very consistent. And um, yeah, I really like the colors out of it. Um, I really also like that they have a Rec. 709 picture profile, which also has a decent amount of dynamic range. For some reason, when you change from Z-Log to Rec. 709, the Rec. 709 always looks like one step darker than Z-Log, so you have to change exp exposure while doing that. But anyway, the Rec. 709 looks great. You have to keep in mind when shooting in Z-Log that the camera is not um, yeah, distributing the dynamic range equally as on every other camera. So on the Z-Cam you really have more uh, dynamic range in the highlights than in the shadows. So everything below 20 IRE is like really muddy. So I would set my false color to that. But uh, you really have a serious amount of dynamic range in the highlights, which is really great. So now let's talk about slow motion and frame rates. And that is where the camera really shines because you have so many different recording options, frame rates here on this camera, which is really crazy. So you can record in 6K full frame up to 38 FPS. You can also shoot in 4K in 120 FPS or in 90 FPS when you want to using like um, 16 by 9 aspect ratio um, uh, 4k 120p is always like in 241 and it's cropped and everything above 48 frames is also cropped so when you want to shoot 4k 60 you get a slight crop as you can see right here but even though in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio you can go up to 90 frames as I've said and when you go want to have like 120 120 frames you can be in the 2 for 1 aspect ratio. You can also shoot in full HD, so true 16 by 9, also full sensor readout in 120 frames per second, which is really great. And you can also shoot in 170 frames per second when you're using um, the Super 16 crop mode. So everything, of course, in ProRes 422, I've tested it and I think it really looks great. I didn't see any kind of artifacts or noise in that image. So that really impressed me and I really like the options and also that you can change the variable frame rate in so fine increments like one frame. That is really amazing and not many other manufacturers give you the possibility to do that. So really enjoyable shooting um, on the Zcam E2F6 in that matter. So now let's come to low light performance and as you can, could expect from a full frame cinema camera, the low light performance is pretty decent. You also have two native ISOs, one on 400 and one at uh, 2500. So, but even above 6400 looks, looks clean, 12800 looks clean. So I think you can really use the camera um, yeah, up to ISO 25600. Um, and even above, you 
could possibly still use it when you apply some noise reduction. So um, the low light performance on this camera is really great and that's also one reason why I bought it but we'll talk about that right now. But before we're gonna do that I want to talk about some little things that are also important. So I've read in the internet that the delay on the Z cam is like horrible so I've tested that and as you can see right here on um, this stopwatch which is counting up um, we get about two frames um, yeah, delay via HDMI on the Zcam which is I think pretty okay and also on Wi-Fi is three frames so I think you can't really complain about that. Also when running and gunning boot up time is really important and uh, the boot up time is like eight seconds and when you want to start record then it's about um, 10 seconds so I think it's pretty usable. It's not as fast as the Blackmagic Pocket but still I think it's really um, quick to, to use. One thing that I find really annoying is the file splitting that the camera does. So you can set the file splitting here in the camera which is like a safety measure when losing power. Um, I personally never had the issue and also the camera shows you when it's on, on low um, voltage so you can switch batteries and keep shooting. But, but if for some reason you lose power then your clip that you're currently recording is gone so therefore you can activate um, file splitting so and then whenever the camera splits the file the last um, yeah the last clip is saved i don't know why that is but for for example on a black magic pocket when you turn off the camera you switch off the plug um, the camera still um, is able to recover the last video up to the last um, three seconds or so so therefore and also the the issue here is with the file splitting that you have an audio gap between these files and you can only match them together in an app from Zcam so I really hope that they can fix that um, via firmware update I think they should be able to but for me personally I find that annoying so now let's talk about why I switched to the Zcam and primarily therefore I free, I have three reasons. The biggest two are um, the cube size form factor um, which make it really compact and also the awesome battery life that I don't have to run it on V mounts and all this stuff. So for that reason I can keep the rig really simple. For example on the Blackmagic my rig when I'm using it on the um, easy rig it was about like six kilos and here I'm between 3.5 and 4 kilos so it's really lightweight compared to the pocket and it's not it has this awkward shape so um, I can customize it to my likings that one I really like. As an additional benefit I also have a pretty awesome low light performance and I also have nice colors and everything like that so I'm um, really pleased about the image and I personally like the color signs here a little bit more than uh, Blackmagic Gen 4. That's what I was shooting on. So um, I really like the Zcam E2 F6. So now let's come to the conclusion. Is this camera really for you? So I think you can use the camera in a bunch of scenarios like run and gun commercial shooting whatsoever so the image quality really speaks for itself and also the camera is really built like a tank and also really reliable because I was using it for the whole day outside in the snow when it was minus 15 degrees. The camera had no issues whatsoever and the camera also didn't let me down once and also when it was full of snow and all that stuff so um, the camera is really reliable also the rolling shutter here on the camera is minimal which is quite important for me dynamic range is nice the costs are fairly cheap so you spend like around 4000 uh, euros or dollars I think um, in the US and for what you get for that is really amazing and um, yeah I personally not I, I personally don't mind that I don't use RAW on this camera because ProRes gives me more than enough options and when I want to shoot RAW as I've said then I use probably my red Komodo which I also use so with these two cameras I feel pretty confident that I could do any job that I need to 
Also, some people always tend to ask what is the autofocus? It's like a push autofocus which you can use when you want to record yourself in the app. You can activate it, but it's not continuous and it's also very slow. So, it's not as great uh, as the Red Commodore, which I'm using right now, or any other DSLR camera whatsoever. So, autofocus shouldn't be the point why you buy this camera. So, if you have any further questions, you know the game, just drop them down in the comments below. If you like this video, please subscribe and I'm gonna see you in my very next video. Cheers!